Hey you guys, welcome back. Today I'm taking a step away from the oven to talk about a different kind of oven, my pregnancy. It's been a year since my life completely changed and I just want to tell you all about it. So here we go. So when I first found out I was pregnant, I was actually in complete shock. Uh, Dana and I had been talking about how we were gonna get married and we were going to wait for about two years and we got married, that's for sure, but the baby came way sooner than, <laughs> than we thought he was going to come. I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was scared. I was just like, I, I don't know if I'm ready for this and truly I don't think you're ever really ready for a kid as much as you can prepare for it or as much as you read the books and you you know you do your research there's just nothing that can prepare you for um the emotions and everything that comes with it but dana was right there and we both were like okay we're gonna <laughs> figure this out and that was the start of everything my first trimester i craved all things salty i wanted pickles, I wanted salt and vinegar chips, roasted salted almonds, like I wanted anything that had to do with salt, and then blood oranges. Super random, but those were the things that I was craving. So salty and then blood oranges. I was not sick. I didn't get any morning sickness. I kept waiting for it to come actually throughout my entire pregnancy and I never got it. I was sleeping probably 14 hours, 15 hours out of the day. Like I would just be, I was so exhausted. So I would wake up tired and then I'd be like, okay, babe, I'm gonna go lay down at 5.30 and I wouldn't wake up until 9.30 the next day. Like it was, <laughs> it was so crazy. Um, and I think that was the first time in my adult life where I really, really, really appreciated naps. And I really appreciate them now, now that I don't get any sleep. <laughs> I did not cook. I, we ordered out probably every single day because I just couldn't, I could not bring myself to do it. I was too tired. But the second trimester they say is when you feel the best. And I did, I felt really good. My stomach wasn't huge. I could still move around. I could still sleep comfortably. Um, but the indigestion did start around that time. I couldn't do acidic foods. I couldn't do spicy foods. Oddly enough, some water would actually make me um, have heartburn in the middle of the night. It was super crazy. It was four months in um, when the public found out that I was pregnant. We did a really cool spread in uh, People Magazine. Then it was like, okay, well, are you okay to work? Or do you wanna work? Are you all right? Then it was every, all the, the craziness that happens when somebody's pregnant, they think you're so fragile. When in all actuality, I felt like superwoman. Like I felt like I could do anything and I, I do now too. I worked really hard and traveled a lot. Dana and I, Traveled a lot, I went to New York. A lot of um, being able to do all the last things that we could do as a couple before I got too big or uncomfortable. I, <laughs> my plan was to keep up with the exercise and I did for a little bit. Um, if I wasn't too wiped out during the first trimester, I did try to go and I, I took it easy. And then the second trimester, um, I did a little bit more in the third trimester. I just couldn't. I was like, I can't. Dana worked out pretty much almost every single day, like he still does, which was nice because it, it kept some sort of routine in our schedule when everything seemed to be going crazy. We were in Houston with the family. We were gonna do a gender reveal with everybody. So we went to the spot like super far in Pearland, Texas, and we went to these two ladies that were sitting in their little ultrasound space and we went in and we were like please don't tell us we don't want to know because we want it to be a surprise when we go to our our reveal party and they were like okay no problem they were super sweet and then they go okay we have the gender they write it in a card seal an envelope the whole nine and then Dana and I are sitting there while they're watching and we we go and look as they're like writing some stuff and it says boy on the screen. <laughs> they didn't mean to and they had no idea that they did it. It was an accident as they were trying to print out pictures for us. Both Dana and I actually wanted 
a boy. And we were really excited when um, we saw that it was a little boy. Dan and I both had our own little moment in that room with them completely unaware that they had told us. Um, so I'm sorry, ladies. We didn't want to tell you because we didn't want you to feel bad <laughs> when we left. We did a reveal party with our um, some of our family down in Texas and Dana hit the pinata and blue stuff flew everywhere and everybody was excited. People thought we didn't know what the gender was when um, we went and so then they were asking us, well, what do you think it is? And I'd be like, I'm not gonna say because I, I we had good poker faces but maybe if somebody would have, you know, pride, I probably would have said it. But no, Dana and I went through the party. We did a pretty good job without revealing it. Dana and I did go to Mexico for our baby moon and we had a complete blast. When I tell you I probably had 12 virgin pina coladas a day, that is what I was drinking and what I was craving and what I still crave now. I liked them before pregnancy, but during and after that, that third trimester and then after, I love them. He actually just bought me some <laughs> mix. <laughs> He bought me some pineapple or, or pina colada mix the other day. I love him, he's so sweet. But also in the third trimester, that was when I really started to show. My tummy got bigger, I could only sleep on my sides, and I doing that for nine months really starts to hurt, and I'm a stomach sleeper. So to go from sleeping on my stomach to not being able to sleep on my stomach at all was a bit of an adjustment for me, and we always spent time outside. Late at night after everything had settled down, Dan and I would go outside and we'd sit by the fire pit and we'd just, you know, we'd talk about, you know, what we would wish for her, our son and, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're gonna be parents and are we gonna be good parents? It was a beautiful time to be able to just think like that and also just cherish those last moments of us just being us, just the two of us. Things were definitely a very fast whirlwind and I know one of these days, Dana and I will sit down and we'll tell you that story. We didn't have like five years of us being together um, as a couple. So we were really cherishing those moments. And then, labor. <laughs> My lovely little nugget decided to come well, actually he decided to wait. He wanted to be fashionably late. So I was due the last week of April and um, he came the first week of May. It was definitely crazy to get past the due date and he wasn't moving, like he wasn't budging. And I was fine with it. I wasn't stressed out. I was like, okay, you just take your time. You need to cook a little bit more, a little bun in the oven, gotta heat up. That's, that's, that's totally fine. And then, he dropped. I think it was close to 40, close to 40 hours. I called them waves because contractions kind of has a negative connotation to it. Each wave was bringing my baby closer to me and closer to being here. Dana was there. I had a doula and a midwife. I had a moment of like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the birthing center. I'm scared. I don't want. I don't want to go. And then I got over it. I did it all natural. I didn't do any medication or anything like that. And um, I, I would do it all over again. I absolutely would. And it was just a really amazing experience. I just remember being in the tub and Dana caught him. Dana actually welcomed the baby. He was the first person that he saw. And I turned around and then Dana gave him to me in my arms and he was just looking at everything. That's how he was. <laughs> He came out and was just like, I was like, hello, it's so good to finally meet you. And it was just the most amazing moment just to feel that love. And I know I've said it before, but you're just not prepared for the wave of emotions that you feel when you see your child. It was worth every single wave, every single push, every single, you know, scream that I let out. I remember being in the car and Dana and I looking at each other going, we have a kid in the car. Like, now we have, now, now it begins. Here goes our adventure. We went home and now I sit here with a little boy who is just so amazing and just 
growing at an exponential rate. His motor skills are amazing. He's grabbing things. He's talking. He already said, Mama, he is looking at everything. He wants to stand and he needs to crawl first, but he wants to stand and walk. And he's just the most amazing thing. And I am so, so, so blessed to be his mom. I think that next time around, you know, we'll be a little bit more ready for it, <laughs> clearly. And also, I don't think it would be a surprise. I think we would try and plan for the next child whenever that is. Not anytime soon, because I am enjoying being able to sleep a little. <laughs> uh, but I am think if I got pregnant and still have the little one, I wouldn't be sleeping at all. So we're gonna wait, but I definitely think that DJ needs a sibling for sure. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for listening to my pregnancy story. Any of you mamas out there or even dads, if you remember cravings that you had or late night runs that you had to go on, just let me know in the comments. I think this will be a fun discussion. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you later.